Babe? Yeah? You can either epoxy the floors or make me a sandwich. In today's video we are going to cover the floor in our epoxy coating. We're doing this to one, protect the floor, and two, create a really nice waterproof barrier. Now this floor actually has epoxy coating already on it, but we're going to add another coat. This existing coating, uh, it's a little bit damaged, it's chipped in some areas, uh, hasn't been laid well, down well in other areas. There's also big grooves along the floor where they put a, um, uh, I think they're an expansion joint or a cracking joint in the concrete floor. So if it does, the concrete floor does move, it cracks along um, that joint. We're going to seal that up with a bit of, um, it's like a rubber sealer in between, and we're going to epoxy over the top so the floor will look nice and smooth. We've already gone around with um, some water and a wee scrubber and just scrubbed up the few areas which the cleaners didn't get to in the corners. Now what we're going to do is lay the masking tape down and get that rubber expansion joint filler in place. So you can see a joint along the floor here. And what we're going to do is lay masking tape either side of that joint and then fill the middle with our joint filler and then we're going to scrape it smooth at the top. I'm going to cover both sides of all the cracks with this tape. And then I'm going to trim off any excess with a razor. Once it's done, you can really see how many expansion joints there were in the floor. All the yellow lines are expansion joints. So to fill these gaps here, what we've got is expansion joint sealant and it comes in these sausage-like pouches and we've also got a sealant sausage gun. Now these just go on the sealant sausage gun like so. Oh yeah, like a glove, like a glove. And then all I'm going to do is just get the top and we're just going to put a bunch of, am I, with my blunt razor? A bunch of cuts in here. Pressure should be able to get that sealant out. Screw the top on and we're good. Good to go. Yeah, there we go. So I need to cut the end, and you need to cut the end off this thing here. Just cut a little bit of the tip off. So that is ready to go. So now all we're going to do is go down these joints and um, apply this sealant. We apply it to the expansion joints like so. And once that's done, we use our wee spatula just to smooth it out. And this is what it looks like after all the sealant is in. When I rip this tape off, it should make a clean line. Our epoxy filler is in. Now I'm going to give this um, the night to set and dry. And then what I need to do is just pull off the masking tape. And we should have a good layer of the epoxy in those cracks. Then we'll be ready to lay down our eco tree. So it's been a good Tuesday. We've got lots done. Tomorrow we'll get the floor done and we are on track. Oh, it is wet out there, it's pretty cold. But today we will start finally epoxying the floor. You can actually hear the rain. It's raining quite heavily and it's pretty cold. So what we're going to do is get this tape off the floor, check to see um, how, those channel, how the epoxy is set in the channels, I don't think we can lay this epoxy today. I just read the notes and it said the application temp temperature is 8 to 20 degrees. And oh, I think it's only going to be scraping 10 degrees today. And in here it's probably colder, the concrete floor is colder. So I might just wait till we get a day that's just a bit warmer to apply it. I'm just concerned it will sit and it won't set for a long time and it might affect the finish on it. But we'll get this tape up anyway. And you can see when the tape comes up, it has made some really clean lines. So it's the next day now. It's a whole lot warmer today. We're looking at about a 19 degree high. I think it was 18 or 19 degree. And actually in here, it's fairly warm. I'd say it's 22, 23 degrees in here. And that's because the sun rises up. It hits these black doors and it hits that black roof. And it just starts warming up the area in here. So it's a far better day to lay our EPO tread. Uh, if you remember yesterday, it was about 8 degrees outside, and in here I reckon it wasn't much, over 10 degrees. Um, it was very cold, it was very humid because of all the rain. There was a lot of uh, air ingressing in through under the doors and under the walls here. But we're a lot warmer today, so we're going to get, start getting this EPO tread down.
So we need to get our EpoTread mixed to use. Um, it's actually quite viscous, and you're supposed to mix it 50-50, so 50% part A, 50% part B. Um, how I was going to do that was I've actually got two markings in here. That bucket is virtually cylindrical. The bottom part is slightly narrower than the top, but not by much. So I've just got a, a 10 centimetre markings on the inside here. First 10 centimetres are part A and the second 10 centimetres are part B. The second probably only needs to be like 9.5 centimetres to actually make it evenly 50-50 because you have slightly less volume in the bottom half of this bucket than the top half. And then I was just going to free pour. Um, other than that, I can't really think of an easier way to get um, equal mixes other than like dipping in like a bucket and scooping that up and then you're just going to get the bucket covered in crap. Oh, look at that, that was a pretty good pour. There's a little bit around here. There's a touch dripping. We'll just give that a quick wipe. Perfect. Now I have previously already uh, mixed these up, so I'm not too concerned. Normally, I'll get, I'll, you can see the sticks that I've used to actually make sure this is already mixed sufficiently. Oh gosh, there we are. This one's a bit, bit. That's real sticky. That stuff there. And I, you notice, I am wearing socks. Yes. It's because I didn't want to track any dirt onto the floor in here because it's all been properly cleaned and degreased. Now, what we're going to do here, put this over by a power drill. So I've cut into the edges of the first half of this building. We're going to go through now with my roller and just roll it on. After this, I actually watched some YouTube videos on laying down epoxy. And you're actually supposed to use a bladed squeegee, which makes the whole job a whole lot quicker. Doesn't it look good? We've done about a third of the building so far. It's actually taken quite a while. We're going into late afternoon now. So I'm going to keep chugging away. I'm going to cut in around the edges through the back for the rest of this room. We'll get this whole room here done. This room, uh, is about two-fifths of the building and then we'll try and start on the next, the insulated side across there. Uh, we'll get, get started on that hopefully tonight, if not we'll have to continue uh, tomorrow. But just look at the colour of that tape. Really makes the place look brand spanking new I reckon. So shortly we'll have our Bondor panels, they're the same colour, well they're the, they call them Titania the colour as well, but it's probably a different colour because different companies. And they'll go right up to about here. So from here down, that'll all be fruiting room. Whoa. It's shaping up nicely, team. It is shaping up nicely. The next day I started the second half of the building. It's 3.30 Friday afternoon. You can actually see the line of where we have epoxied up to it right here. So I've got another, you know, how many metres is that? Six metres to go until we hit the back wall there. And so far we've done it all the way through in that whole back room which is slightly larger than this room. Um, first coat of epoxy, it's going to need two coats because some areas, you can just see the colour change in it. So I want to get two coats over so it's this nice, perfect titania colour. Um, yeah, Friday afternoon, and unfortunately I can't keep going because I need to do a delivery to one of our, um, our whole people we wholesale to who um, then on sale to the restaurants. And they've rang me up last minute, hey, we need mushrooms for tomorrow, Saturday. So we always like to get mushrooms out there. No matter when someone rings me, hey, have you got mushrooms? I will try to drop what I'm doing and get them mushrooms. Um, and it's just so we are known as a reliable supplier of mushrooms, obviously good quality mushrooms. And whenever they need it, we can get it to them. Um, we generally try to do regular deliveries, but occasionally we get these calls. Um, but that's okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna shoot out to the other farm now, grab what we've got there, deliver it to them, and also while I'm there, I need to bag bags. Yes, yes, I haven't bagged bags in quite uh, some time. We've been in lockdown, um, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Government imposed lockdown last week. We went to the camp level from level four to three. This week we went from level three to level two, which basically means kind of business as usual, but not quite. The farmer's markets still aren't open, but we're going to, this will be the first week in a, in a month plus we've actually bagged bags. So Friday afternoon, I'll be at the farm and we're gonna be bagging bags, oh I hate it. I still do it all myself and one because um, I haven't, uh, I don't pay for labour to do that too because I don't pay for labour to do that yet. 
I really need to do that, but for now it's easy for me to just go there, um, get the bags together, throw them on the steriliser, get it running, and run it for 36 hours. However long it needs to run for, um, and then on Sunday, open up, let it cool. Monday, we can inoculate those bags. So Friday afternoon for me is going to be a whole lot of fun. I will be able to tuck into a wee bourbon and coke later on tonight though, so that is a positive. We're done. It's Monday lunchtime. I started this last Tuesday, and I thought I could do it in a day. Ah, it'll just take me a day. What is it, a bit of epoxy? Just mop it on the floor and you're done. But nah, it took the good part of a week. There are a lot of problems that arose. Bad weather, cold days. The floor took me longer to prepare. Then I had to lay the epoxy down and wait for it to dry before I lay the second coat on. It's still not quite dry. I can almost feel a slight tack to the touch. I've got my socks on, but it's not leaving any marks when I walk around. But there's still probably just a little bit of moisture in there which needs to dry off. But shit, doesn't it look good? Doesn't it look good? I imagine how bad it's gonna look when all the mushroom bits and crap fall over it and get stomped into it. Oh, I'm gonna be cleaning it every single blimmin' day. Oh, I can't wait. So here's the drain, which has turned out really well. It's a little bit rough to the touch, but that's okay. There's a few little spots I need to patch up as well. There's actually a few little holes in the floor here where the epoxy just flowed into. So I'll dab a bit of epoxy and smooth those off. But the drain's looking really good. I always said to myself, when I rebuild my farm, I'm definitely going to have drains in the floor of the fruiting room. And well, that's what we've got now. So really happy. And that epoxy has formed a nice coating over there. So the water should be able to, any excess water should be able to go into there and just flow down nicely to these drains. Looking really good.